dollars. Now, this is a super interesting sale. Why? Does Mercedes need to suddenly fire sale off historical assets from Stuttgart? Seems like they've got enough cash reserves. They have two of them. So maybe it's just a space thing, probably not. So why would they choose? Now, recently in discussions that I had with members of uh, NBC USA, Mercedes-Benz, I learned that this decision did come from corporate. It was not someone in the warehouse saying, can someone please move this? And they said, why don't we sell it? This was a corporate level decision. Take a step back. Mercedes-Benz built one of the first automobiles, right? They have a, one of the most storied histories in motorsport and consumer vehicles, yet their stock price, share price, and the share prices of all automotive makers don't even equal the share price of Tesla. Now, how would they combat that? They might want to remind the buying public, the shareholding public, or the stock purchasing public that there is value not only in the EBITDA and uh, you know, the balance sheet that exists for the, the next fiscal year, but why there is something more important than just that when it comes to Mercedes-Benz. How better to remind everyone that Mercedes-Benz is more than just the projected earnings and revenue than to say, we built some super special cars and now we have just sold the most expensive car of all time, five-fold almost, even though it's kind of a lease and the guy has to bring it back whenever they ask and can't start it without their help. And we now have that wreath, right? Maybe our stock price should go up. Great idea. I love this. This is a brilliant PR move. Problem is they fumbled the bag. Had they said, coming soon, Tom Cruise movie in July. No, had they said, coming soon, we are about to announce the pending sale, the opportunity to buy the most important. And they had hyped that for six, eight weeks. People would have been, oh my God, did you hear they're gonna sell this car? Instead, you looked on Twitter and saw Mercedes-Benz sold a very expensive car. And you're like, wow, that's interesting. Wait, why'd they sell that? That's it. I didn't even know they had two of them, huh? Oh, well, and a week later, the story was over. So they went through this entire process to try to restore authenticity, heritage, and importance to the brand and thereby the share price. But they fumbled the bag because they didn't milk the sale the way they should have in order to capitalize on it. I am not coming down on Mercedes at all. I think it was a brilliant move. I think the execution could have been better. And I agree with them. I think they are a company with a racing and performance and consumer vehicle production heritage that should demand a share price as high as or higher than their competitors. So PT Musk is very good at, at building hype. Even if it's like, we're gonna release, uh, we're gonna release, uh, you know, uh, Tetris 3.0 in the, in the interior console of our new Tesla. And people are like, oh my God, did you hear this? And it's a news story. Selling this barely made a blip. Mercedes makes fantastic cars. They are, you know, one of the winningest racing teams. They have seven time world champion, Lewis Hamilton. Toto Wolf is a genius in my opinion but they can't carnival bark to save their lives. They can't pull off a PR stunt, and that's what they should have done. They knew there was five to 10 people in the world that realistically, A, could afford it, and B, would afford it on the terms that they would allow it, which means right of ref first refusal to buy it back, requested appearances at whenever they want it. This is basically a glorified lease. So their pool was limited. They could have easily hyped this sale up beforehand and still kept it private. Um, so brilliant idea by Mercedes, not the best execution, still a great company that should have a higher share value. The value on this is super cool for a lot of reasons. So, you know, it was basically a factory as new car had never been owned. And it was supposed to be the next Le Mans winning car, but unfortunately Mercedes took out about half the audience in, you know, 19, what I don't remember, uh, through an unfortunate accident and decided to discontinue the Le Mans program. So it's like this was going to be the next generation and was going to annihilate the competition. You know, that's what, what's really special about it. And, and Uhlenhout was a, a brilliant designer and a brilliant engineer and rumoredly never owned a car, just sort of drove this one around. So this was his kind of personal car and maintained from the factory. It never went into consumer hands. It was maintained by Mercedes-Benz under his direction, obviously. The point is, is that the most fantastically large automotive sale that we may see for a long time and have ever seen was sort of like an, oh yeah, I did. I, I think I heard something about that as opposed to Top Gun movie has gotten a lot more 
press about this or like whatever it might be. Like um, Kylie Jenner's uh, new lip injection is probably something I've read about more than the sale of the Ulan Hout Coop and that's a shame. It was in the news for a, a day or two, maybe if you follow automotive news. Not only was it the most expensive car ever sold, but it's one of the most expensive items, uh, things uh, of value that have been sold. Now there's artwork that sells in the hundreds of millions, but it's few and far between. First time anything mechanical or having a use beyond simply aesthetics has ever sold in that range or has sold in recent years in that price range. It's, it's, it takes the idea of automotive sales into a range of super high art, whereas before it was just collectible cars. And I think that that's something that breaks a boundary. We probably should have heard more about it and with the appropriate public relations hype, it could have worked. Mercedes has really good advertising and PR. Like they have some of the cleanest, nicest, most consistent advertising campaigns. They should have John Hamm on there saying, everyone, here comes the Uhlenhout. And people have been like, what is the Uhlenhout? Is this gonna be a new series of Mad Men? No, it's a, it's a car and it's important and it's gonna be sold and people would have paid attention to not only sale, but the lead up to it. So that when the event happened, they cared about it. If nobody knew it was gonna be for sale, they don't care that it's sold because they didn't know it, A, it existed and B, that it was gonna be for sale. So kudos to Mercedes for having a brilliant idea to try to restore some heritage and respect to the Silver Star, which I think it deserves in spades. But unfortunately, execution left a little something to be de desired. I think they'll learn from it next time because they have another one. They did establish a green energy fund or a carbon neutral scholarship. Well, carbon credits are certainly still an offset thing that happens, especially in the EU. Now, if Greta has anything to say with something that, you know, Mercedes-Benz might need ways to offset some of their terrible diesel program. And by saying, here, we have 138 million euro to put into our carbon credit offset program, then they can do as they please. How dare them. Right now, I need all of you to click the link in the description below and visit Auto Tempest. Not only is it the best place to shop for your next car, but they're the ones that allow us to have so much fun doing Car Trek. I hope that you enjoyed Car Trek 8. We just released that on Freddy's channel, and now we're off to film 9 and 10. So seriously, we can't do it without you guys supporting Auto Tempest so they can keep supporting VinWiki and supporting Car Trek. It's honestly where I start most of my days because it allows me to search all the major listing sites at the same time. I find my cars faster, much more easily, and I find them in the nooks and crannies of the internet that I never would have found without Auto Tempest.